The FPT-50 provides a long-term solution for precise water level control in a firewater storage tank or a break tank. This installation guide will demonstrate how it could permanently replace a faulty float assembly or any other electronic level control. Your waterline controls kit includes the panel with two mounting wings, the sensor with 50-foot multi-conductor wire, extension rods that are pre-color coded, a mounting assembly, and a hardware kit. The mounting assembly will differ based on the environment and ease of access. A valve and a Y strainer are needed for installation and can be purchased from waterline controls. We recommend placing the control panel near the tank, keeping it above the water level but out of line of sight of any VFD or DAS. The panel can be mounted on the wall using proper mounting methods for a NEMA 4X panel. When running metal conduits, keep note of the high voltage and low voltage compartments in the waterline panel. It's important to not have low voltage conduits run parallel to high voltage conduits without proper spacing in order to avoid inductive electrical interference. If that is not possible, make sure the cross is perpendicular. High voltage connections, such as the one for power in or the valve operation, should have metal conduits running into the high voltage area. There is a pre-wired audible alarm that will enunciate when the low or high alarm is triggered and a silencer switch for this alarm in the panel. The sensor wire and the remote fire panel low voltage connections should run into the low voltage compartment. If you want to run a remote high voltage circuit for the alarms, additional conduit connections from the high voltage compartment are needed. Before mounting the sensor to the tank, make sure the extension rods are attached and secured with colors matching. Sensor mounting methods may vary depending on the structure of the water tank. A water tank such as this could either use an adjustable mounting sleeve, a hanging assembly, a flange type, or a bulkhead fitting. If limited interior space calls for an exterior mount, an external static pipe can also be installed. For tanks made from a concrete basin, the sensor can be mounted to the inside wall using a coupler and mounting bracket. This waterline control system is color coded so the colored rods match the colored wire on each relay to identify which switch activates with its respective sensor rod. It meets NFPA 22 and 72. A temperature sensor could also be included to meet the temperature requirements of NFPA 22 and 72 guidelines. The authority having jurisdiction may require additional parameters and upon request we can meet the requirements as needed. The circuit board inside the low voltage compartment has the bottom terminal block for the sensor connections and the top terminal block for remote fire panel connections. The low voltage sensor is a jacketed and shielded bundle of seven wires. A bare wire, black, blue, brown, white, red, and green. The sensor rods are colored respectively. The blue wire is not present so the blue wire does not need to be connected. From the longest rod to the shortest, the black is the software start switch and needs to be long or longer than the brown rod. The brown is the low alarm, the white turns the valve on, the red turns the valve off, and the green is the high alarm. The bare wire cable shield connects in with the black sensor wire. The connections for the remote fire panel use normally open relays that close when the switch is activated. These connections come into the low voltage area and connect to the top terminal block with two positions in the lower terminal. These will indicate the state of the water level control switch points, including a power loss instance. In this case, there are four remote fire panel indications that can be used, high and low alarm points, fill on and off, and fault conditions. When running the conduit for the valve connection, locate the placement of both the valve and the Y strainer. Run your valve connections through the conduit into the high voltage area. They are represented here with orange wires. In the high voltage area, there are three power wires for the power in connections, black, white, and green. There are also three relays for low alarm, high alarm, and fill, each with colored wire for the respective sensor rod. The red and white rod are switched with the relay with red wire. 
and the audible alarm's black wire is wired through the relays for the low alarm and high alarm. Make the power connections. The green wire is ground, the white wire is neutral, and the black wire is the hot wire leg. The audible alarm wires are color-coded to be connected respectively. A jumper runs from the hot leg into the common of the fill relay. The valve has two wires. One goes with the neutral bundle of white wires and the other gets a spade to plug into the normally open aspect of the relay. It's ready for use. To test your waterline control system, press the hold to test button using the tip of a pencil or pen until the yellow testing LED turns on. Each switch will turn on the LED, the remote fire panel connection, and the high voltage respective relay. Once testing has completed, the power alarm LED will flash five times, turn green, and the yellow test light turns off. Operationally, the valve opens when water drops below the white rod, and the LED for fill turns on, along with the respective relay and dry contact. The valve closes when the water reaches the red sensor rod. If the water drops below the brown rod, the low alarm LED turns on with the fill LED. If the water rises too high and touches the green rod, the high alarm activates. Your remote fire panel should reflect the status at the waterline panel. Don't forget to register your FPT-50 system online. The serial number can be located on the outside of the panel. Enjoy the FPT-50 and its dependable use for many years. If you have any questions, feel free to contact our team at Waterline Controls. Thanks for watching.